This is the supplemental video for notes 8.5, Finding the Determinant. Let's talk about square matrices for a moment. A square matrix has the same number of rows and columns. So for example, I've got two rows here and two columns. So this is a two by two matrix. That's an example of a square matrix. Every square matrix has a real number called its determinant. The determinant of a matrix is usually denoted by or written as you write the words DET and in parentheses you would write the letter A or whatever the name of the matrix is or you can also write the letter of the matrix in absolute value signs to symbolize the determinant. Either one works. When you're finding the determinant you're going to use a specific formula for a 2 by 2 matrix and a different formula for the 3 by 3 matrix. So let's go through the 2 by 2 matrix first. You see here we have letters representing numbers in the matrix we're going to start with the top left and we're going to multiply A times D and subtract after we multiply B times C. So it's going to be A times D minus B times C. And remember order of operations means that we're going to multiply first and then we'll subtract. So let's do some examples so this makes sense. So I'm going to start with number one. I'm going to start in the top left corner with 3. I'm going to multiply 3 times 1. So I have 3 times 1. And then I'm going to start in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to subtract 3 times a negative 5 to find the determinant. So 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 3 times a negative 5 is going to be a positive 50. Ooh almost just wrote 5 there. Sorry about that. A positive 15. So 3 plus 15 is 18. So my determinant here is 18. Let's try that again. I'm going to start in the top left. I'm going to multiply negative 6 times 5. Then I'm going to start in the bottom left and multiply subtraction sign first and then I'm going to multiply negative 5 times negative 3. So negative 6 times 5 is a negative 30 minus negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. Negative 30 minus 15 is negative 45. Okay, let's keep going. Let's try this again. So I'm going to start in the top left. I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by negative 4. So it's going to be 3 times negative 4 minus, and then I'm going to take start in the bottom left side still and multiply 0 times negative 3. And when we do that we're going to get 3 times a negative 4 is negative 12. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. My answer is going to be negative 12. Okay let's do this one more time. I've got neg I'm going to circle negative 2 in the top left corner and multiply negative 2 times negative 3. So it's going to be negative 2 times a negative 3. Then I'm going to start with the term in the bottom left side and I'm going to subtract negative 3 times negative 1. Remember always multiply first so negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. So there we go. We found the determinant of four examples. Hopefully that was helpful. Now let's move on to finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. I'm going to teach it slightly different than the Delta Math video. So you have, sorry about that, that's my phone. Um, you have an option of using either method. So um, this one's going to look complicated at first, but I think once we do several examples, it'll go a lot more smoothly. So let's just talk about the process first, and then let's do an example so it makes more sense. So what we're going to do, this is an example of a 3 by 3 matrix. If you notice, all the columns are labeled A. So I have a column A, B, and C. So they're all labeled by different letters, column A, column B, and column C. And then the little numbers, or the subscript, again, always notes the row and column. So this is the location of the element in row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3, then you drop down to the next row, row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2, etc. Alright, when we're doing a problem like this, one of the first things that we're going to have to do 
is we're going to go ahead, sorry about the noise, is copy the first two columns again. So I'm going to call, copy column A and column B out here. The second step is I'm going to start in this top left, just like I did with the 2x2 two two matrix. I'm going to draw a diagonal line all the way down to the bottom. Then I'm going to move over to the next the number in the, the next number in that row and draw a diagonal line down and then move over one more time and draw a third diagonal going from the very top of the matrix to the bottom of the matrix. What I'm going to do is multiply all the products on the diagonal and I'll write that number down. Then I'm going to write a plus sign. I'm going to multiply all the numbers on the diagonal. I'll write that number down, then I'll write a plus sign, then I'm going to multiply all the numbers on the diagonal one last time, and then I'm going to write down that product, and then I'm going to add those products together. So I'm going to find the product of each diagonal with a down arrow, and then I'm going to add all those products together. And so that will give me the sum of the products for the down arrows. I'm going to go back and do the same thing with the up arrows. So I'm going to start at the very bottom, left corner and I'm going to draw a diagonal arrow going to the very top of the matrix. I'm going to move over to the next column and draw an arrow that goes from one side of the matrix all the way diagonally across to the other side and I'm going to do it one last time with the last row that's actually in the original matrix. I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from this entry or element all the way diagonally to the top of the, the matrix that I've created by adding the second two rows. Once I've done that, I'm going to have to do the same process again. So I'm going to multiply all the numbers on the diagonal and then I'm going to add that to the product of all the numbers on the second diagonal and I'm going to add that to all the product of all the numbers on the third diagonal. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the product of each diagonal with an up arrow, and then I'm going to add all those products together. I know this sounds like a lot of math, but it'll really flow nicely once we start to do it together. The determinant is actually when you take this, that sum of the down arrows and subtract the sum of the up arrows, you get your determinant. So let's do some examples, and I think once we get into... A repeatable method it'll start to make a lot more sense so again let's do it together if I go too fast just pause the video take your time it's important that you understand this process okay so first thing I'm going to need to do is to copy the first two columns again so I'm going to take the first column and I'm going to write one zero five outside my matrix then I'm going to move over here to the second column and I'm going to copy five negative 2 and a negative 1. Now that I've done that, I'm going to start in the top left and I'm going to draw three, oh sorry, and I'm going to draw three diagonal lines. Let's draw our first one. I need to turn my paper so I can draw it neatly. I'm going to draw a diagonal line through the numbers going from one side of the matrix to the other. Then I'm going to move over to the 5 or to the next column and I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from the top to the bottom. I'm going to put an arrow at the bottom so I know that these are my down arrows. Sorry about the focus problem. And then I'm going to do this one more time with negative 1. This is the last entry in the first row. I'm going to draw a diagonal arrow that ends pointing downwards. Be careful you don't draw your arrows too dark because you need to see these numbers. So now I have three arrows all pointing downwards. Okay, so first thing I need to do is just to make sure I understand what I'm doing, I'm going to write down and write a picture of the down arrow in parentheses. Okay, I'm going to find the product of the first diagonal. So that's going to be 1 times negative 2 times 3. I'm going to put a plus sign and then I'm going to write all the numbers that I have to multiply for the next diagonal. So it'll be 5 times 0 times 5. Then I'm going to write another plus sign and then I'm going to
copy all the numbers on the net, I know that I have to multiply together again. Negative 1 times 0 times 1. Okay? So does this make sense? So I've written down all the numbers on each diagonal, and I'm going to multiply each of those together. So I'm going to multiply 1 times negative 2 times 3. That gives me negative 6. 5 times 0 times 5 is going to be 0. And then negative 1 times 0 times 1 would also be 0. So my final answer here when I add everything together is negative 6. So, sorry, let's focus this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I've done the down arrows. The next thing I have to do is do the up arrows. So first thing to do, and I don't have to turn my paper, fortunately, for this, is start at the bottom left. So I'm going to start at the bottom left. And I'm going to draw an arrow that goes diagonally across the matrix to the top right. Then I'm going to go over to the next column and draw another diagonal arrow. They should be parallel, so if you notice they're the same distance apart. And then I'm going to go to the last column inside my matrix and draw another up arrow. And I keep them straight because these have arrows on the top. My other arrows had arrows on the bottom. You could also use colored pencils to tell the difference, or you could even use highlighters if you want. I'll try to use a bunch of different methods, so and you can figure out which one you like best. Okay, so we're going to go through the same process with our up arrows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5, multiply it by 2, and multiply it by negative 1. So it's going to be 5 times negative 2 times negative 1 plus, go over to the next diagonal, it's going to be negative 1 times 0 times negative 1. Is that negative 1? No, sorry, a positive 1. Sorry, I think I need to change it up and maybe use some highlighters, because 1. And then plus, and then go over to the last column, it's going to be, it looks like 3 times 0 times 5. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply. 5 times negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 10. Negative 1 times 0 times 1 is going to be 0. 3 times 0 times 5 is also going to be 0. So 10 plus 0 plus 0 is 10. So we're almost done. If we want to find the determinant, of matrix A, you know what we got to do? We got to subtract the down arrows minus the up arrows. So you're subtracting, think about this, the down arrows minus the up arrows, or we could write this way, the down arrows minus the up arrows. And this is simple enough, right? 10 minus 8. All right, negative 6, sorry, minus 10 is negative 16. So that's our final answer. All that worked for negative 16. All right, let's try this again. Remember our first step? We need to rewrite the first two columns. So right outside of our matrix, I'm going to copy 3, 0, 5. And then I'm going to copy 9, negative 5, negative 1, and 5. And again, always, oops, sorry, we've lost focus. Always start in the top left, and let's try highlighters this time and see how that works. So I've got a yellow here. So, and again, for the down arrows, I have to turn my page. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to highlight the first top left and draw a diagonal line all the way down to the bottom of the matrix. Then I'm going to go to the next column and draw a second diagonal line. Then I'm going to go over to the third column and draw my last diagonal line. So see if that is a little bit easier maybe for some people if you do the highlights. So I'm still going to use the same notation down or, and in fact, I can put a little arrow, I guess, on the end if I wanted to. So for my down arrows, or let's get really fancy. I'll make it yellow. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply, again, all the numbers on the first diagonal, which would be 3 times negative 1 times 5, plus, and add it to 
the product of all the numbers on the second diagonal plus the product of all the numbers on the third diagonal. All right, a little easier to read this time because I'm using highlighters. So 3 times negative 1 times 5 is a negative 15. Negative 5 times 1 times negative 5 is negative 25. And if you don't feel confident multiplying, you can always put these in the calculator. And then 1 times 0 times 5 is just 0. So if I add these together, negative 15 and negative 25 give me a negative 40. All right, so now I've got to do the up arrow since I used orange, I mean yellow. Let's use orange this time around. I'm going to draw, start at the very bottom left. Let's put a circle around it. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal arrow, this time going from the bottom to the top. And I'm going to move over to the next column and draw a second diagonal line going from the bottom to the top. Move over to the third column and draw my third diagonal going from the bottom to the top. All right. So this will be for my up arrows, which are going this way. And again, we'll do the same thing. Is I'll highlight this in, oops, not yellow, but orange. And then that way, we're all on the same page. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to multiply all the numbers on the first diagonal together. So it'll be 5 times negative 1 times 1 plus, and let's go over to the second diagonal, 5 times 1 times 3 plus the third diagonal, which is 5 times 0 times looks like negative 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this. 5 times negative 1 times 1 is just negative 5. 5 times 1 times 3 is 15. And 5 times 0 times negative 5 is just going to be 0. So negative 5 plus 15 is 10. Now, that means that the determinant, our final answer, is going to be negative 40 minus 10. It's very important that you find the down arrows first. Find the, find the sum of the products of the down arrows first so that when you subtract it's fairly easy. It's just negative 40 minus 10 which is going to be negative 50. So there's our answer. Oh sorry I lost you. So there we go. Negative 5 plus 15 is 10. Negative 40 minus 10 is negative 50. All right, we've got two more to do. We're almost done. So let's go ahead and finish. Okay, so last but not least, let's go ahead and do number three. I would love it if you pause the video at this point and try one or two of these yourself if you feel confident. If not, you can go through another example again with me. So first thing we do as usual is to write down the column, the first two columns. So it's going to be negative 1, 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, 2. So those are the first two columns of the original matrix. Circle the first number in the first row, first column, and remember what we're going to do. And then maybe I could find some colored pencils this time for a little variety. Oh, here's a pink. And this time I'll write my down arrows with colored pencil. This might be the easier way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do three diagonals again, right? Starting in the top left, draw one arrow that goes diagonally across the matrix. So you're going to cut across three numbers. Then move over to the next column, draw your second diagonal, move over to the third column, and draw your final diagonal. So it's easier to do this when you break it up and just do everything with the down arrows first, and then you can add the up arrows. So starting with my down arrows, so I'm going to, in fact, let me go ahead and draw the arrow in pink. I've got negative 1 times negative 3 times 5 plus 
negative 2 times 5 times 4 plus negative 2 times 3 times 2. So now we got to do a little math here. Negative 1 times negative 3 times 5 is a positive 15. Negative 2 times 5 times 4 is a negative 40. Did I do that right? Oops, look at what I forgot. I forgot a negative sign out here. So this should be negative 2 times 5 times negative 4, which gives me a positive 40. And then last but not least, negative 2 times 3 times 2. That should be negative 12. Okay. So now I've got to add this together. 15 plus 40 minus 12 should give me 15 plus 40 is what? 55 minus 12 is 43, if I do my math right. Okay, now let's move down. We've got to draw our second set of arrows. Maybe, yeah. let's pick, this looks like purple or blue. Again, we're going to start, where's my pencil? At the bottom on the far left, we're going to circle this. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from the bottom left all the way across the matrix diagonally. Then I'm going to move over to the next column and go draw another diagonal and then draw a third diagonal again from the third column. So start with the first column in the bottom row, draw a diagonal, then move over to the second column, draw a diagonal, then move over to the third column and draw a diagonal. Now these have up arrows. so. We're going up here, and I'll go ahead and draw the up arrow, but again, let's go ahead and color code it to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so again, let's multiply all the numbers on the diagonal, so it's going to be negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 2, lots of negative numbers there. Plus, and remember to always write your numbers in parentheses so that you can keep track of all those negative signs. This is 2 times 5 times negative 1. It's just always a good, good habit to get into. And then last but not least, we have 5 times 3 times 8, negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 2 is negative 24. 2 times 5 times negative 1 is negative 10, and 5 times 3 times a negative 2 is negative 30. So we've got to add all those together. Negative 24 minus 10 minus 30 is negative 64. Almost done. So to find the determinant of A, what we need to do is take 43. We're going to subtract a negative 64. Again, this is why parentheses are so important. So that's really 43 plus 64. 43 plus 64 is 107. All right. So go ahead and try the last one. I'm actually going to walk you through it. I've already done it, but I want you to try it on your own. See if you can get the same answer. I'd love if you pause the video. So again, just as one final step, we're going to take the first two columns, copy them over here. So I'm going to write down negative 5, 2, and 5. Then I'm going to take the second column and write it down over here. So I'm going to write down 2, negative 1, and 4. Now, as always, we're going to start in the very top most left position. I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from one end of the matrix to the other with a down arrow. Then I'm going to move over to the next column, and I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from the top of the matrix to the bottom of the matrix. And then finally, I'm going to move over to the third column and draw my third diagonal line, all of them having a down arrow. So next thing I have to do is multiply all the numbers on the diagonal. So let's do that. I have negative 5 times negative 1 times 4, so let's set it up. Plus, I'm going to add that to 2 times 2 times 5. Plus, I'm going to add that to negative 5 times 2 times 4. Now remember, order of operations says we have to multiply before we can add. So negative 5 times negative 1 times 4 is 20. 2 times 2 times 5 is 20 as well. And negative 5 times 2 times 4 is a negative 40. So when we add these together, we get 20 plus 20 minus 40 is 0. Now, next thing we need to do is go back up to our matrix, 
starting in the bottom far left, I'm going to draw a diagonal line going from one end of the matrix to the other and so and draw an arrow to denote that this is going upwards. Then I'm going to move over to the next column, draw my next diagonal, move over to the third column and draw my final up arrow, putting arrows on the ends so we can keep track of which arrows are going where and which numbers we need to multiply. Okay, so go back to my first up arrow. I'm going to multiply 5 times negative 1 times negative 5. Then I'm going to move over to my second arrow, putting a plus sign in between. I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 times negative 5. And then lastly, I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 times 2. I'm going to write that product right down here. So some people could probably multiply those numbers in their head. I like to write everything down to make sure I don't make mistakes, especially when you're working with negative numbers. So 5 times negative 1 times negative 5 is 25. 4 times 2 times negative 5 gives me negative 40. And last but not least, 4 times 2 times 2 gives me 16. Another advantage, too, is it's easier to check your work if you write everything down, because I can go back and remultiply the numbers again. Or I can even put all this in a calculator and see if I get the same answers I get using mental math. Okay, so we've got 25 minus 40 plus 16, that's 1. So we've got 0 minus 1, so my answer actually ends up being negative 1. I hope this video was helpful.